All right, man, peace. So one of the most pervasive arguments in the NBA world right now is who is the greatest player of all time? And the reason why this argument tends to be so prevalent is because LeBron James has displayed superlative skills, particularly the last eight to nine years of his career. And it has caused many members of the mainstream liberal sports media to try to align him with Michael Jordan and see how they measure out when compared with one another. Well, of course, this has caused a backlash amongst many of the older NBA fans, especially many of the older NBA players, who suddenly feel compelled to inject Kareem Abdul-Jabbar into the conversation. Why is that? Because many of the older players from the 80s, especially Isaiah Thomas and Byron Scott, James Worthy, etc., they may be a little bit jealous of Michael Jordan. And that residue may still be lasting from the understanding that back in the 80s, Michael Jordan was getting a lot of acclaim even before he won championships. So they need to concoct a counterbalance. And people pretty much know that LeBron James, even though he is a great singular talent, he's only 3-6 and six in the finals. And oftentimes he was known for coming up short in big moments like he did in the 2011 finals. So Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, he fills the void very nicely for a player that can be used to argue against Michael Jordan being the greatest player of all time. Do I believe that Kareem is the greatest player of all time? No. I believe he's second or third. It depends. Sometimes I'll have him second all time or sometimes I'll put Bill Russell there. But pretty much he and Bill Russell, I believe, had about equivalent impact on their teams. The fact of the matter is that Kareem won one title with the Milwaukee Bucks while he played with Oscar Robertson and then didn't win anything for nine years until Magic Johnson came along. And then Magic Johnson and Kareem formed the most successful tandem of the 1980s. And then, of course, Michael Jordan rose to the forefront in the 1990s and changed the paradigm of success and winning. And just to be transparent, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar had not been shy about making very, very critical comments about Michael Jordan. He stated that Michael Jordan chose commerce over conscience. Why does he say that? Because Michael Jordan has never felt compelled to join the woke contingent. And whenever a so-called black athlete is not compelled to join the woke contingent, which basically is just a bunch of emotionally disturbed Negroes who make comments on national television for attention, whenever you're not willing to do that, suddenly you become the new target of ridicule from liberal blacks who talk a lot but do nothing. And as we can see from Kareem Abdul-Jabbar in the last few years, He's been very desperate himself to garner some type of mainstream appeal from the media and from the masses at large by embarrassing himself on shows like Dancing with the Stars and a lot of these stunt shows where they'll take washed up celebrities and have them do a bunch of stupid shit to embarrass themselves. I recently saw Kareem trying to do a backflip off of a diving board. Damn near broke his back. <laughs> Just sad. And from what I understand, when Kareem Abdul-Jabbar retired... He was damn near broke. And that's why he's so upset with Michael Jordan because Michael Jordan plotted out and planned his career and his after basketball career. While Kareem spent most of his career pouting and being distant from many of his compatriots in the NBA to the point where he's had a hard time getting a job as a coach in the NBA. Also because he's a center, but mainly because he was known as a stoic figure who was unapproachable and you can't be that and be a coach. So now he spent the last few years trying to change his image, but it's a little bit too little too late. But just to get back to the point, do I believe that he's been jealous of Michael Jordan for a long time? Yes, I do. So anyway, they're going to talk about it, and I'm going to chime in. Let's talk about goats, the greatest of all time. Who is the greatest of all time? LeBron, Michael. What about the NBA's all-time leading scorer, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar? Well, we know it's not LeBron. LeBron is not even one of the top five greatest players in the history of the NBA. At least not on my list. On my list is Michael Jordan, number one, Kareem, number two, Bill Russell, number three, or Bill Russell, number two, and Kareem, number three, Magic Johnson, number four, and Larry Bird, number five. I had LeBron James pretty much interchangeable with Larry Bird or, or even Magic Johnson in a stretch. If you were to throw all three of their names into a hat and shake up that hat, Whichever name you pulled out will be the one that you pulled out. But after LeBron James' performance in last year's finals, I have to knock him down a peg to the point where it's very discernible to me the difference between Larry Bird and LeBron James. That mental disparity is as stark 
as the physical disparity between LeBron James and Larry Bird. But once again, though, LeBron James is not the greatest player of all time. You can't be the greatest player of all time and be 3-6 and six in the finals. Because if we're going to start giving players credit just for getting to the finals, well, then Dre West has to be a top 10 player of all time. There's no doubt about that because he's 1-8 in the finals. According to Kareem, there's no such thing as the GOAT. He told the undefeated Mark Spears, the reason there's no such thing as the GOAT is because every player plays under unique circumstances. We played different positions, under different rules, with different teammates, with different coaches. I partially agree with what Kareem is saying here. I think that the more accurate appraisal of players has to be according to the era in which they played. And Michael Jordan was the greatest player of the 90s. Kareem was the greatest player of the 70s. But once again, he only won one championship in the 70s. Kareem was not even the greatest center in the 80s. The best center in the 80s was Moses Malone. And that is why I have Moses Malone somewhere between 11 and 15 on my list. Uh, that, that portion of my list is very flexible. but. Once again, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar was not even the best center of the 80s, much less being the best player. The best center was Moses Malone. So I think that Kareem hurts his own argument for being considered the greatest player of all time when he astutely states that it's better for players to be evaluated according to the era in which they played. Every player has to adapt to their circumstances and find a way to excel. This isn't Highlander! <laughs> there can be more than one. <laughs> That's actually very witty. One would not expect Kareem Abdul-Jabbar to be a Highlander fan. But once again, just in scrutinizing Kareem's career in the 1970s, when he was the best player, he only won one title. He did win, I believe, five MVPs in that era. But that era was also a very tumultuous era in the NBA. It was an era in which the league almost collapsed. And had it not been for the ABA collapsing and the NBA being able to acquire Julius to Dr. Irving, who knows what may have happened to the NBA because they were certainly on the brink. Now, when we look at that in contrast to Michael Jordan, what he was able to do in the 90s, not only was Michael Jordan able to take the league from the level that Larry Bird and Magic Johnson left it at, but he made it a global game. When basketball was under the auspices of Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, it was barely surviving. All these things have to be weighed into account when and if we want to evaluate the impact that a player has. And it's more than just what he does on the court, it's also how he's able to take the game to another level. I mean, do you agree with the cap? I just love that he watched Highlander. Of course he did. Come on, man. First of all, he was a movie star. What I are we know, talking you know, about? I just figured like he was like, that, those were... He fought Bruce Lee, I man. Know, that was a great movie, <laughs> yeah. man. But uh, with his big foot, he put him under the chest. Yeah. And um, airplane. He was comedic genius. Yeah. Airplane. Roger. Yeah. Roger. Yeah. Roger. Yes. Um, no, this, I mean, this is the thing that, like, the same thing with who's better, the 73 win uh, Warriors or the uh, 72 win Bulls and all these conversations. That's easy, it's the Warriors. Right. <laughs> well, we know it's not the 73 win Warriors. The 73 win Warriors were not even as good as the 2016 Cleveland Cavaliers if we were just to evaluate what occurred and what transpired on the basketball floor. Now, those of us who watched that series know that there were some mitigating circumstances that assisted Cleveland in winning that championship. But, but we know that the 73 win Warriors are not the greatest team ever. That's for damn sure. But once again, just getting back to what I was saying about Kareem in comparison to Jordan. When Kareem was reigning supreme over the NBA, the NBA was in a very, very dark place in the 1970s. When Jordan took over in the 1990s, that's when the NBA started to reach its height to the point where when Jordan finally retired in 1998 from the Bulls the second time, the NBA went into a Great Depression, the ratings dropped, etc. And David Stern had to pretty much beg Michael Jordan to come back for two years, and he promised him that he would be able to become owner of the Washington Wizards. That's the main reason why Jordan came back. <laughs> when I state that it's not just about what you do on the floor, I'm not talking about all that social justice stuff. I don't weigh that in the balance like if I'm talking about boxing and I say that Muhammad Ali is the greatest heavyweight of all time I'm not going to say oh it's because of the stand he took against the Vietnam War no I'm going to assess what he's able to do in the ring and also how popular he made boxing that's what I mean by it's your appeal it's more than just your greatness in the ring or on the court it's about how you're able to magnetize the game and draw in more fans Michael Jordan's game was the most charismatic game in the history of the NBA, even up to now. 
his style of play was the most charismatic of any player in the NBA's history. It all comes back to the same thing. We always say, well, like, what rules are we playing under? What, like, there's a lot of circumstances that led to why these individual teams and players were great, right? One of my big pet peeves is I was having this conversation with a younger basketball media person who was saying Isaiah Thomas, the original Isaiah Thomas, wouldn't survive in today's NBA. Oh, I mean, come on. I, and I said, well, Yeah, that's just an idiot. But you get those guys on the internet and those dudes who play NBA 2K all day and they say nonsense like that. Isaiah Thomas was six foot one inches tall. He was just as tall as Chris Paul. He was quicker than Chris Paul, and he was better in the clutch than Chris Paul. So imagine a Chris Paul, except faster, more explosive, a slightly better shooter, slightly better shooter, slightly. Even though CP3 has better shooting percentages, Isaiah Thomas played in an era where you could be a little bit more physical. CP3 may have been stronger than Isaiah Thomas. That would have been a great matchup. But for people who are not quite sure how well Isaiah Thomas would have done in this era, just look at Chris Paul. And Isaiah Thomas like a combination of Damian Lillard and Chris Paul. I'll put it like that. Well, how, why do you say that? I said, he shot 20% from three for his career. I said, you got to understand, he grew up middle school, high school, college. He had not seen the three-point line until he got to the NBA. Right. Absolutely. And how they were coached back then was get the best shot possible. You could look at Larry Bird's three-point shooting percentages in the early, early 80s. They were not that good. It wasn't until the late 80s that he started to expand his game out to the three-point line, where he became the first 50, 40, 90 guy. And I believe that he was the first person to go 50, 40, 90 two years in a row. Not only was he the first person to do it, he did it two years in a row. So it's just a totally different mindset back then. You can't just look at the stats and say, oh, look at his shooting percentage from three. You have to understand that the mentality was different back then. Hey, right. So, of course, that's not part of his arsenal. If he were born in today's era and generation and was 22 years old or whatever, yeah, of course he'd be a great three-point shooter because he was a great shooter from everywhere else on the floor. To your point before you go, Royce, he was, I think he's the only guy to beat Jordan, Bird, and Magic. Yeah. Thank you, sir. You know your basketball. That's why I state that Isaiah Thomas... He's on my list somewhere in between that 11 to 15 range. That's why I state that. I've had brothers ask me how come he's so high on my list. When you look at Isaiah Thomas' accomplishments, he's the first little man in the history of the NBA to lead his team to two consecutive championships in a big man era, in the modern era. He's the only player in the NBA to have defeated Larry Bird, Magic Johnson, and Michael Jordan in the playoffs. And he defeated Jordan multiple times. He should have beat Magic twice. And he should have beat Bird twice. If it wasn't for him throwing the ball away against the Celtics in 87, they would have beaten them two years in a row. And if it wasn't for him hurting his ankle in 88, they would have beat the Lakers two years in a row. So that's why I have Isaiah Thomas so high. Yes. In, in the playoffs. Yes. So Isaiah Thomas... No, but I'm just, great but I just use that as an No, no, I'm with you. I'm with you. know, like the, the idea that we try to compare people from, uh, from with the, without the context right. of what they accomplish. Is Absolutely. Stuff. What's that binary kind of thinking where it's like you can only plug this player into this era? As right. if Isaiah Thomas or Larry Bird right. or whoever it might be yeah. wouldn't get better. Of course. And, and I, evolve themselves. If Larry Bird played today, he would feast today. He would feast today. In an era where guys could not even put their hands on him. I mean, give me a break. Oh, and by the way, the opposite is true. People think that somehow LeBron played in the handshake era. Oh, get out of here. He's 280 pounds. I agree with that as well. These guys that come on the internet, oh, if LeBron played back in the 80s, he'd be too soft. No, he wouldn't. LeBron would dominate in the 80s as well. He'd be much slimmer because he wouldn't have those PEDs in the system <laughs> like he had now, allegedly. But he'd be dominant back then as well. Great players are going to be great in any era. If Jerry West was playing today, he'd be cooking guys today. You can make the case that Jerry West is playing today. His name is Steph Curry. Yeah. Yeah. He's the size of Carmelo, right. right? Bigger, stronger, faster, better nutrition, better training, all that stuff. All those guys would be great in this era, too. I'd say this, sure. though. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar really can't exist in 28. And did you hear what Amin El Hassan stated about LeBron James? He said he's the size of Carmelo. That's why I state that, to me, LeBron James is if you had a Scottie Pippen and combine him with a Carmelo. 18 media. That is way too much perspective. Yeah. Too much nuance. And nuance yeah, yeah, yeah. And like, come here. on, Korea, yeah. Cap. We, we need a hot that. take around <laughs> here. Give us a name. Yeah. Give us a name. Come on. The dirty demon of debate. It's LeBron. <laughs> it's LeBron. Oh. All right. Anyway, Nick's head coach, David Fish. But anyway, that's it on that. 
I partially agree with Kareem, but I also think that he's saying that to kind of inject himself into that GOAT conversation because so many older players have been injecting his name into the GOAT conversation. And by him saying that there is no GOAT, that's his way of saying that I should be in consideration as well. Pretty much like how Kobe Bryant stated a couple of months ago, enjoy my five, enjoy Michael's six, enjoy LeBron's journey. (laughs) That was him saying LeBron is not on my level yet. But anyway, peace.